Isang maganda at mainit na lunes ng hapon, mga kaitolay. Sa ating mga students, parents, co-teachers, warm welcome po sa ating Italay Online Tutorial General Biology 2. Ako po si Chu Tortina from San Lorenzo Ruiz Senior High School, SDO Pasig. Happy Monday sa aking partner, Tutor Easter. Kamusta po? Magandang buhay, Chu Tortina. Magandang buhay mga kaitulay at mga biostar students and partner schools. Ako po si Chu Easter from Horacio de la Costa High School, SDO Caloocan. Okay, so today is March 21, 2022. Nasa week 6 na po tayo ng ating aralin. At for this week, we're going to discuss phylogeny. Okay, so bago tayo magsimula, Tutor Easter, ang ating usual reminder muna. No? So ready, get ready, and prepare your pen and paper para sa mga new concepts na ide-discuss natin for this week, for today. And then, of course, our gadgets. And, of course, dapat ready tayo. Ready ang ating sariling makinig at mag Okay, so, ayan. Okay, Tutor Tina, ready-ready na talaga ang ating mga Biostar students for today. So, for attendance check, nakikita natin sa ating mga chat box na tinatype na nila ang kanilang pangalan, grade and section, school and location, at name ng kanilang mga teacher. Marami nang nagtatype, Tutor Tina. At please share this live stream to others and please be respectful with your comments. Tutor Tina, ano nga po ba ang ating dapat na i-recap o i-review para sa napag-aralan nila last week? Okay, so before that, no, Tutor Easter, i-recognize muna natin yung mga naging partner school at ating mga Biostar student previously sa ating week 5. At napaka-init, kagaya ng panahon ngayon, no? napaka-init na lang yung tanggap nila sa atin. So for the Biostar students of the week for week 5, we have Joanna Del Rosario, Alia Vinas, Charmaine Balesteros, Ainsley Rustra, Mary Anting, James Jaire Dio, we also have Jar, uh, Jazel Velasco, Austin Enrique Celos, aking student, Christian Suganob, Angelica Ketiayon, Lorraine Quinto, uh, Rosel Cagalinga, Justin Fernandez, Erwin Sandoval, Emerson Deliariarte, Jesser Ayan Bayani, Sheila Alvarico, Patricia Rico, Annalyn De Vera and Allen De Jesus. Napakarami nating Biostar Students of the Week, Tutor Easter. Oo nga po, Tutor Tina. Sobrang dami ang ating mga Biostar Student. At para naman sa ating mga Bioactive School of the Week, from the Venetia High School, Ma'am Janet Tamse. From Horacio de la Costa Senior High School, Yours Trumuli. From Lorenzo S. Sarmiento Senior National High School, Ma'am Norayda A. Sali. At um, Padre Garcia National High School, Ma'am Ladilyn Dukay. From Jones Rural School, Ma'am Shell Gumpal Reyes. From San Lorenzo Ruiz Senior High School, Ma'am Christina Yay. Marie. <laughs> and from Marawi Integrated National High School, Sir Jerwin A. Gutierrez. And from San Mariano National High School, Mr. Noli L. Balbin. Oh, Salamat oh. po sa ating mga partner school at mga bioactive teachers po. Na yes. Na sumusuporta sa ating mga restaurant tutor, Tina. Okay, congratulations po and thank you. So, sana po supportahan nyo pa up to the last two weeks. Okay, so balikan muna natin yung discussion natin last time, no, Tutor Easter. So, this is from the week 5, basic taxonomy. Okay, so, um, o yan, Biostar students, please ready, <laughs> mga keyboard warriors, warriors natin to answer. Okay, so for number 1, the only domain with nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. Okay, so we have okay. there. By star students, bakit tayo po ang sagot na one and then your answer. Yes, six-letter so word. <laughs> yes, ready. Kamusta na ba ating chat box, Tutor Easter? May mga sumasagot na ba? Puro greetings, nice. Tutor Tina. Oh, okay. we have one answer here from Elena Remorosa, Yukaya. Tama po ba, Tutor Tina? Okay, so let's see. Yes, correct, Yukaya. Very good. Let's go now to number two. 
Okay, number two, he was a Swedish botanist who devised the current classification that we have and also the naming system. Okay, so please type the number and then your answer, the first name, then the last name of this Swedish botanist. Tutor Easter, meron na ba tayong mga bystar students na sumasagot sa ating chat box or ating okay, comment section? We have here from Amar Alamada Sali Carolus Nineus ang sagot niya. So tama po ba, Tutor Tina? Yes, of course. The correct answer is Carolus Linnaeus. And then based on our discussion last week, ito yung kanyang Latinized name. Okay, so let's go to number three and last question for our recap. Kingdom that contains extremophiles. Okay, ano kaya yun? So we have there, medyo mahaba, no? Okay, makaka-answer ba? Number three and then type your answers. It contains, oh, contains all the extremophiles. Okay, so what is your answer, my dear? Uh, it by star students, number three. They are still okay from uh, Sir Tutor uh, Tony. Eight day, mga kaito live, please share our live stream <laughs> para mas marami pang maawad ang online tutorial natin. Salamat and happy learning. Hello, Paul. Tutor Tony. Hello, Tutor Tony. Namiss natin si Tutor Tony sa ating live. Na. Oh, Tutor Tony, may answer na tayo from uh, Jamanuel Enriquez, K. Bacteria, and Kala May Alapaap. Is it okay, bacteria? Okay, yes, correct. So we have the kingdom, Archaea bacteria. Okay, very good. Uh, bye, star students, and thank you for answering. Thank you for participating in our recap. So ano nga bang ating most essential learning competency for this week, week 6, uh, tutor Easter? So for our most essential learning competencies for quarter 3, week 6 is to describe species diversity and cladistics, including the types of evidence and procedures that can be used to establish evolutionary relationships. So yan ang matutunan natin for this session. Chukitina? Okay. Okay, so let's start. So last week, um, we said, no, we talk about based on our discussion that systematics is abroad. Okay, no, malawak na study of biological diversity and the relationships among organisms. And for the last week, we already discussed uh, or talk about taxonomy. So for this week, ang aarali naman natin ay phylogeny or phylogeny. So what is phylogeny, mga kaitulay? So when you say phylogeny, this describes now relationship of organism as which organism it is thought to have evolved from or from which species it is most closely or distantly related. Okay, so yung binibigay sa atin ng phylogenetic relationships, it provides us information about the shared ancestor. Not only that, no, it also provides us so, ano yung mga similarities and then differences among living organisms? Okay, so paano ba natin inaaral to, no? Tutor Easter at ating mga kaibigay. So, biologists use a tool. They call this tool the phylogenetic tree or the tree of life. So, yan. So, we have here the example of a phylogenetic tree. And then here... Um, it illustrates us or it shows us the evolutionary pathway and then connectedness among organisms. Ba napakarami? We have the three main domain here. We have the archaea, the bacteria, and then the eukarya. Okay, so it has multiple lines of evidences that shows that these organisms are really related. Pero take note, ano mga kaitulay ha, that scientists consider this phylogenetic tree as hypothesis of the evolutionary past. Bakit hypothesis? Ano ibig sabihin? Because no one can go back in the past to confirm this proposed relationship. Okay, so in short, we can just reconstruct or illustrate another phylogenetic tree in the future kung may mga bagong mga organisms na mag -i. Okay, so we, or, or in other words, we can also represent the, um, the relationship among organisms in a different tree. Okay, basta make sure na uh, yung mga characters na makikita natin would be the same. Then, mamaya, discuss. 
Okay, so when we're looking at this, para lang tayong tumitingin sa ating genealogy, right, teacher, uh, tutor Easter, no? Parang tuitingan natin sa family tree natin. Um, But this okay. time, mm -mm, napakaraming um, uh, magkaka-related or related organisms. So kasi pag family tree lang, no, just like ours, no, hindi kami ganun ka, tutor Ba kayo ba sa inyong family, mara malaki ba ang inyong family tree, tutor Easter? Ah, yes, Tutor Tina, marami mara, mara kaming member ng family. So, ami, kami ay limang magkapatid. Tapos, ang aking mother's side, walo silang magkapatid. Tapos, mm -hmm. sa father's side, walo din. Tapos, malaki ang aming uh, family tree. Pero, pagdating sa anak-anakan na isa, dalawa. <laughs> Totoo yan. <laughs> okay, so let's continue. So, in they, how they construct phylogeny or phylogenetic tree is that they are Um, considering characters. Okay, so these characters vary amongst. And what are these characters? This can be morphological or anatomical features, just like na yung dinescas natin last time, uh, yung presence of bones in the limb or the upper limb. So sa arms ng human, sa wings ng birds, or um, yung presence ng humerus, humerus. Uh, ulna, regius, okay. So, tinitingnan natin kung may, pagka, may pagkakaiba ba, present ba to or absent ba to. And then, we also have physiological adaptations. Let's say, uh, can we make our own food or we rely on other organisms to be able to, and you know, uh, uh, we are heterotrophs, okay, mga ganun. And then, molecular sequences or our DNA sequences. And then, behavioral or ecological. So these characters can be in recognizable states, no? Maka ito dai. So when you say recognizable states, dapat makikita natin present ba siya or absent ba siya. Just like for example here, let's say the character that we are looking here is the, the teeth in amniotic vertebrae. So in all mammals and most of our reptiles, teeth are present, but in uh, Birds and turtles, okay, these teeth or the set of teeth is absent. Okay, so here in, um, in our phylogenetic tree, before, no, in the past, when they construct it, they are comparing as many characters as possible. Okay, parang the more the merrier, tutor Easter, okay? Kaya yes. lang, the more characters that they have, the, they think it's, it's better. Okay, so ang nangyayari ngayon, organisms that have um, many or more common characteristics or more similar characteristics, they become now neighbors of this phylogenetic tree. So magkalapit sila, mag nagiging neighbors sila. Let's say for example, ha, we have here lizard and then bird. So since they are neighbors in this phylogenetic tree, we can say that they have the most number of similarities or mas marami silang common characteristics as compared to rat and the lizard, frog and the lizard. Okay, but if we rely mostly on the similarities, that could be misleading. Okay, kasi kung magiging ganun yung basis natin in classification, then we will have an incorrect classification system. Why? Because magkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag nating homoplasy. So when we say homoplasy, homoplasies are shared characteristics that are not a result of common ancestry, but of independent evolution of similar numbers. So we call it analogous structures. Diba? So it can result from convergent evolution. Ayan. So we review lang natin the discussion ni Tutor Easter last time about convergent evolution. So it happens when organisms are under similar environmental pressure. Okay, kung nasa isa, pareha sila ng enver, uh, environmental pressure, they now develop similar adaptations or we call that nga the analogous structure. But um, technically, no, they're not really, they have different ancestral lineage. Yes, diba? Hindi naman talaga sila coming from the same ancestor. So let's say, for example, yung mga cave animals natin. So since they are of the same environmental pressures, padidim, Okay, they lost now their ability to see, their eyes, even their eyes na nawawala. Na and also their pigmentation. So, okay, parang black and white na lang nakikita nila. But when we look at this uh, different organisms, hindi naman talaga sila parehas ng ancestor. Okay, so they evolve from different ancestral 
lineage. Okay, so let's compare now the receiver's homology. So here in letter A, we have here lizard, bird, and mammal. Okay, so if we are going to use homoplasy, we can, um, and then the character na titingnan natin dito ay yung pagkakaroon ng four-chambered heart. So, kung yun ang gagamitin natin character, birds and mammals will be neighbors kasi lizard only has three-chambered heart. Pwede that would be misleading kasi hindi naman closely related talaga si bird and mammals. They are not really coming from the same ancestry. But lizard and bird, reptiles and a bird, really are coming from the same ancestry. So, kung... Uh, Ang mangyayari ngayon, so dapat si lizard and bird will, will be on the same or will fall into neighbors, magiging sila yung neighbors, and then si mama ngayon, nakahilo. Okay, so ganyan po. No? So if we're going to look uh, only based our classification system, just looking at the similarities, okay, kakaroon talaga tayo ng incorrect classification. So that's the reason why we have cladistics. So in cladistics, it's a way of classifying organisms into hierarchical branches based on derived, uh, shared derived characteristics. Ano nga ba itong shared derived characteristics? Uh, no, I-differentiate natin because we also have ans shared ancestral characteristics. Yes, okay. So when we say derived characteristics, these are the similarity that is inherited from the most recent ancestor. While the ancestral characteristics are the similarity that arose prior to the common ancestor of the group. So if we are going to compare that in a timeline, si derived is new, okay, newer characteristic. So um, import, importante dito to um, differentiate them is when, okay, kailan ba na manifest yung characteristic na tinitingnan natin? Mas bago ba siya or mas luma? Because when you say ancestral, this one is older okay those derived characters are newer recent okay common ancestors so titingnan natin anong characters ba yo um mas na unang nagmanifest or mas na unang nagbabas diba and then ano ba yung later na uh, na characteristic na meron tayo okay so we have here for example our ancestral characters the presence of backbone in all mammals and other vertebrates not only mammals no we have also here the fish the reptile, and then amphibian birds, they also have backbone. So we can say that this one is ancestral. Kasi um, before, long before pa, meron na rin to, meron na present na rin to sa iba't ibang type of animal. While the derived character, character here is the presence of hair only in mammals. Okay, so we have, but the presence of hair is now absent sa ibang type of animal. So, wala nang hair. It is already absent in amphibians, in reptiles, and so on. Okay? So, napaka-importante na titingnan natin yung timeline or when the characteristic really uh, manifested or arose. Okay? And then, we have here two important terms. Simpleshomorphy, meaning that these characters are, that the shared ancestral characters are all present in the members of the clade. We call that the same flesh or more deep. But when the derived character is shared by the members of the clade, the we call that the synapomorphy. Okay, so same flesh or more deep, again is the character, the ancestral characteristic is shared by all the members of the clade, while the synapomorphy is the derived character is shared by all the members of the So, mama ya papakita. Okay, so how do we determine? Uh, ba, which one is derived aside from the time and which one is the ancestral characteristic. Kung, let's say, hindi natin alam kung kailan, no? kung kailan yung time na lumabas yung characteristic. So, biologists use an outgroup. So, what is an outgroup? This is not part of the group of interest. Yung group of interest natin, we call that the in-group. But also, it's not too distantly related. Hindi siya ganun ka layong um, organism sa i-compare natin. So the outgroup is used to polarize the character states or in or in per change. So the character state possessed by the outgroup is defined as a priori or meaning before as ancestral pleasure. Okay, so we have here 
So after we test, after we analyze the cladistic study, we have na, we the, we have now what we call a cladogram. So a cladogram is a tree-like diagram uh, that represents the relatedness of organisms. And then the basic unit of a cladogram is what we call a clade. So the smallest, yes, the smallest unit that they have this common ancestor. ancestor. So let's say, for example, here we have an example cladogram, and at the very bottom, okay, we can see the character vertebrae. Okay, so by looking at this, now we can conclude that uh, all the organisms in the cladogram, except for the insect, okay, is said to be or has um, vertebra, or siya lang yung hindi vertebrae in this study. So we can consider insects here as an outgroup. Okay. So the, the outgroup will serve as a useful comparison for the animals in our study. Since the vertebrate characteristic um, is shared by all the animals here in our study group, we call this now the ancestral character. Okay. Or we can also call this as the simplesomorphy. Okay, because this one is uh, can be shared. Yung ancestor character na ito is shared by all the um, organisms here in our cladogram, such as fish, amphibians, birds, prosimians uh, or primates, and then bees. Okay, and then now, next. The next character after vertebrae, we can see the tetrapod. Okay, so the tetrapod, the fish, is, the fish now branch off right here because... Um, among all the, so wala na si insect, so among all the animals here, siya lang yung hindi tetrapod. Okay, so as we can see here, no, Tutor Easter, as you move towards the upward, no, dito sa ating cladogram, yung placement natin ng organism or ng character confirm its relatedness to one another. Okay, so we can say that prosimians or what we call now uh, the primates, uh, I'll use the pen. Okay, yung uh, primates natin is more closely related to humans than birds is to humans. Okay, so actually in 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 interpreting a cladogram, kung sino yung nasa rightmost mo, yun doon ka more closely related. Okay, so let's say birds are more closely related to primates, amphibians are more closely related to birds, birds. and so on. Okay, but it's not, um, it cannot be in reverse way. So of course, the humans could be, um, kasi siya yung pinakalas natin in our in-group or the study interest. So of course, humans, we can say that humans is closely or more closely related to the primates compared to the other animals in the group. But we cannot say that prosimians is more closely related to amphibians, to fish, and so on. So, but uh, aside from that, uh, since we talked about earlier that um, this one is hypothesis evolutionary path or evolutionary past, we can now reconstruct it. Just to make sure that the characters will fall on uh, the same um, position and then nandun pa rin yung mga characters or yung mga organism of our study. So let's say here, for example, no, um, dito, nakita natin na yung, yung fish branch off in this part, but nandun pa rin, no, it falls on also, uh, yung character pa rin natin dito would be the vertebrates. So nung tetrapods na, nag-branch off na siya, and then we have here in the amniotic egg, see amphibians ay nag branch off na. Then we have the presence of hair, okay, na wala na si birds. And then the bipedal, it's only the humans. Okay. So here, we can, uh, it, uh, it's just showing to us that we can really um, write or reconstruct a uh, cladogram in a different way, but make sure that the in-group, okay, ay nandun pa rin siya sa tamang characteristics. Okay, so uh, let's talk about now the parts of our cladogram. Okay, so we have here the root. Okay, so the root is the oldest common ancestor of all the species in our phylogenetic group. Okay, so ayan si root. 
And then the circles here, denoted by um, blue circles right here, is what you call the node. Okay, so in other reference, you can see that this as the internal node. Yan nakalagay dyan. So the nodes are where the species branch off from the common ancestor. So organisms that are more closely related share now more common, uh, share now a common ancestor. So let's say, for example, here we have the taxon 3 and then the taxon 2. Ang common ancestor nila itong node na to. Okay, so we can say that taxon 2 and taxon 3 are more closely related than taxon 1 and taxon 3. Okay, because they are sharing a more recent common ancestor. Okay, so yeah, so we can also say that yung pinakalas natin um, na group we have, we call that the outgroup or yun yung ipagko-compare natin sa ating mga in-group. Okay. So, aside from that as well, we have sister groups. Okay, so when we say sister groups, this one is a pair of taxa that are most closely related to each other. Okay, so than any other group pa in our study. So here, let's say for example, we have here the organism B and E as our sister taxa, okay, or sister group because they share the most uh uh, they share the common ancestor, yes, and no other um, organism in this cladogram share the common ancestor that we share, right? Okay, uh, what else? Okay, so sa ating mga biostar student, can you also, can you type here, ano pa kaya yung mga sister taxa in this diagram? Is it only D and E lang ba ang sister taxa dito or sister groups dito? Okay, so ang characteristic natin, it's a pair of taxa that are most closely related because they share the recent common ancestor. And sila lang yung um, groups na yon na nag-share dun sa, sa ancestor. No other um, organism in this cladogram share that. Sige nga, ating mga biostar students, may ano pa kayang mga organism yung, we can consider as sister taxa in this diagram, in this cladogram that we have. Ayan, super pino. May sagot tayo from Elena Remorosa. FNG daw. Tama okay. ba? Okay. Yes, correct. FNG is also a sister taxa. What else kaya? Okay. Oh, also B and C are sister taxa. Ayan, ang gagaling. So, na iintindihan na nila yung concept of sister taxa. Okay, now so let's go to another um, terminologies here. So, yeah. So, here, aside from that, no. We also have an example here. So in our diagram, we have the homo or the humans. We can say from this diagram, by looking at this diagram, we can conclude that it is more, more closely related to chimpanzee based on this diagram okay? because they fall on, or they are sister taxa here. Aside from that, gorilla, yes, you can see here we have the gorilla and then Okay, this common ancestor uh, nag-divert siya dito, but we have chimpanzee and homo or the humans. So we can also say or we can also conclude that gorilla is a sister taxa or in sister taxa with chimpanzee and the homo. Okay, and then we can also say that our orangutan here is also sister taxa with our gorilla, chimpanzee, and Okay, so I hope that's clear for our Biostar students. Okay, so let's go now to other way of interpreting our cladogram. So first one is monophyletic. So monophyletic consists of all of the ancestor species species and all its descendants. So let's start muna tayo dito, Tutor Easter. So we have here the red circle. This one, when you say red circle, that is the node. And that node represent the common ancestor. Common ancestor ni no. The organism E and F. Okay, so if we are going to, to encircle this one, because ang sabi naman lang dito ay consist of the ancestor and all its descendants, then we can say that E and F is also a monophyletic unit. Okay, diba? So, na, na, ano naman natin, na-meet naman natin yung standard ni monophyletic. Ang sabi lang naman niya is common ancestor 
and all its descendants. And ang descendants lang natin dito is C, E, and F. So we, we can say that this clade is a monophyletic already. Okay, so what if we go, we choose naman itong node na to, which is also a common ancestor. Then we, if we are talking about monophyletic clade, so dapat E, F, and G is also a monophyletic clade. Okay, and then also this one, this one is another common ancestor. And then isama natin lahat ng kanyang descendants. Then also EFGH is a monophyletic clade. Okay, sa ating mga BioStar students, can you also give us example of monophyletic clade based on this uh, diagram? May type ba? <laughs> okay. So, so ayan. So, Star students, so shout out sa ating mga Bio Star students from Horacio de la Costa High School, from San Mariano National High School, at okay. sa aking co-teacher na si Ma'am Beverly Lorenzo Ocoman. So, yan po. May 2.30 na may sagot na EFNG daw. Yes, E, F, and G is also a monophyletic group. C and uh, this one also, C and D, is also a monophyletic group. Okay, and then A, B, C, and D is also a monophyletic group. Okay, mm -hmm. so tingnan natin yung iba, no? So this one, we have the common ancestor here. Uh, so we can say that crocodile, stegosaurus, tyrannosaurus, uh, Velociraptor and hawk are one of the common or of the monophyletic. So actually, ito yung talagang gusto ng kadogram natin no? to have monophyletic. So the common ancestor plus all its descendants. Dapat isama mo lahat ng descendants. Next, we go to parapyletic. So parapyletic cave consists of the ancestral species but not all the descendants. So, hindi niya sinama lahat ng descendants. We call that the parapyletic cave. So in our example here, we have this one is the common ancestor. This one is the common ancestor. Well, by, by the way, let me go back. In monophyletic, you have to count kung bibilangin mo kung ilan ang monophyletic in the cladogram. You, have, you just have to count the number of nodes. Okay? So, malalaman mo na kung ilan ang monophyletic group in the cladogram. Okay, so going back in our parapyletic, so here, hindi niya sinama yung descendants na A and B. So, hanggang C and D lang sinama niya. So, that's a parapyletic lead. Okay, because um, kailangan mong mamit in monophyletic all its descendants. So in our example here, so hindi niya sinama si Hawk, sinama lang niya si Stegosaurus, Taranosaurus, and Velociraptor. So yan si parapyletic group. And then the last, we have here the polypyletic group. This means that um, uh, it includes many species that lack common ancestor. So wala silang common ancestor. Gusto mo lang silang. Aralin. So let's say here, an example natin, um, common ancestor ni C and B is this, this node. Ang common ancestor ni E and F is this node. Pero gusto mo silang aralin, so that would be a poly polypyletic plane. Okay, you can also choose B and let's say G. Okay, wala silang common ancestor. They lack the common ancestor, pero gusto mo silang uh, Aralin. So, you, that could be a polypyletic plate. So, ang example natin dito, let's say you want to study bat and the hawk. Okay. So, they don't have the most recent common ancestor kasi ang common ancestor ni bat would be this known. And then, si hawk eh, is this known. Okay. That's the polypyletic type of representation. Okay, so here, since kanina nakita natin, marami palang pwedeng representation, we have now the principle of parsimony. And ito napakaganda ng Tutor Easter because the simplest is the best. Diba? Hindi lang pala sa beauty yan, pati sa, pati sa pag-represent ng relationship or relatedness ng, ng organism. We need to choose the most simple. And the most simple ay yung merong pinaka-onting evolutionary step. We call that now the principle of parsimony or we call that the most parsimonious. Okay, so let's say we have your hypothetical three bird species. So hypothetical because we cannot really sure that this uh, um, species are really related. So meron tayong three possible phylogen phylogenetic tree. So let's say ang um, uh, representation is one and two, three and four, and then the other one, one and three, two and four, and so on. 
Meron tayong three uh, phylogenetic tree. Okay, so ngayon, bibilangin natin yung evolutionary step. So dito, meron siyang eight events. Dito meron siyang nine events. Dito meron siyang ten events. So kung sino yung least number of events, evolutionary steps, yun yung pipiliin natin. And we call that the most parsimony. Okay, so the most, uh, mas, mas simple, mas maganda in terms of classification. Okay, and then we also have various tree layouts. Meron tayong rooted tree and unrooted tree. When uh, Ang difference lang nila in rooted tree, we can see meron tayong uh, common ancestor here and it diverged into two lines. So the blue lines uh, for bacteria, green for archaea, and orange for our eukarya. But in unrooted biogenetic tree, wala siyang common ancestor, pero nakikita natin yung relatedness of one organism. Okay. Uh, so there you go. So we now, um, for our summary, so systematics now focuses on biological diversity, the taxonomy and phylogeny. And then for taxonomy, we are um, focusing on the identification of species. Uh, we use the two classification method, the naming system, and then in phylogeny, we use statistics and so on. Okay, so there we have it. Um, at natapos na natin ang systematics uh, tutor Easter. Okay, so now let's go muna sa thoughts to ponder before tayo uh, mag-knowledge. Okay, so for our thoughts to ponder, no, um, as we end up the discussion of systematics tutor Easter, no, uh, hindi ko... I can't help myself, but remember this Bible verse talaga. So let me read it from Genesis 2, 19, 20. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So itong uh, systematics, it's not just a subject. No, but pinapakita sa atin nito yung isang purpose ni God para sa atin. It, it, it is to name yung mga ginawa niya. Diba? So napakalaking responsibility sa atin nito as human being na i-explore pa kung ano pa ba yung meron pa bang mga I un, I un, un, unidentified species. Ano pa ba yung mga unknown species na kailangan nating pangalan. So, napakahirap nito. Nung, nung nag, nasa college pa ako, tutor Easter, itong subject na to, is napakahirap niya talagang intindihin. So, na-appreciate ko lang siya when I'm in master's. And then, right now, reading this Bible verse, no, na we have this purpose, isa sa napakarami nating purpose as man, is to name the creatures. No? Sa lahat ng ginawa ni God, ay tayo ang responsible for that. No? Napakalaking, uh, ano yun, no? It's an opportunity for me. Na natin ang bawat isa. Yes, no na, na uh, and then we can also see here na tayo talaga yung ginawa on the topmost na hierarchy. So hindi niya yan binigay yung responsibility to na to. Hindi niya ibinigay sa iba, pero ibinigay niya sa man to name them, di ba? Napakaganda. Okay. So I hope we appreciate this so, subject. Yeah, the one ko. Dahil tayo din yes. ay Nag-aalaga, di ba, ginugot tayo sa ano ng lalaki. Kaya tayo yes. ay talagang kapapangalaga din ng mga kalalakihan. Bilang isang baba, <laughs> di ba? Yes, si Adam okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, to correct yan, no? In uh, the last part of the uh, verse na mabasa natin. So there we have it. So for our what's on your mind for the week, ating task for the week, mga Biostar students is you have to create a tree of your relatedness your family tree and story, using of course your own family so you can use your grandparents as your common ancestors and then your parents and then you and your siblings so please submit your outputs on our official itulai general biology to facebook page with tutor Easter and tutor tina until march 25 only okay so there yeah, you have it <laughs> Uh, ano na naman yan, mga pananambigan ng ating mga Biostar students. So, ayan na, ang ating knowledge check, mga ka-Biostar students. Pakitay po ang inyong sagot. One, and then sagot po. Or the number, and then sagot po. Okay? For knowledge check, number one. 
The science of cladistics produces a system for naming and classifying organisms. A, true, B, false, C, cannot tell, D, E, either A or B. Bias test students? Sagot na. Type, Type the number and then your answer. Okay, to 13, we have an answer here from Elena Remorosa. Is letter B. Is it letter B, to 13? Yes, yes, correct, very letter true. B. It's taxonomy. Let's go to number two. Number two, when using a cladistic approach to systematics, which of the following is considered most important for classification? A, shared derived character characters. B, shared primitive characters. C, overall phenotypic similarity. D, analogous primitive characters. Characters. Okay, so second okay, What is your answer in number two? Okay, so, bye, students. Ayan. Uh, shout out tayo dyan sa ating mga partner institution. So, again, from Elena Remorosa, letter A. Is it letter A, Chutertina? Yes, correct. So, yes, we are considering share-derived characters. Okay, for number three. A branching diagram that represents the proposed phylogeny or evolutionary history of a species or group a kinship b pedigree c genogram d cladogram number three by star students please type your answer kinship ba so we have an answer here from elena again is it letter d to 13 yes correct it's cladogram all right let's go to number four to three easter Okay, for number four, what is a shared derived trait? A, a trait shared by all outgroup taxa. B, a physical trait shared by sister, sister taxa. C, a physical trait shared by all organisms of that particular taxon. D, a recent trait shared by all sister taxa and their most recent outgroup. So what is your answer, Biostar students, for number four? Is it A, B, C, or D? Okay, type na mga Biostar students. Okay, shout out sa lahat ng mga nanonood sa ating session ngayon. So, we have an answer from Ivan De Lunas. Letter B. Is it letter B? The correct answer oh, is letter C. C. Okay, shared by other visits in a particular taxon. Okay, so let's have number five. Based so, for number five... Above, Okay, which of the following species has hair? Is it A, species number four, B, species number three, C, species number two, or D, species, species number one? Okay, may sumasagot na ba, Tutor Easter, sa ating, mga, ating comment section? Wala pa, Tutor Tina. Yes. Okay, meron na po from Ivan De Lunas again. Is it letter D? Okay, tingnan okay, natin. Well, Okay. Yes, correct. Very good. So, that correct is, answer yes. is letter D, species A. So, kaya nang mag-interpret ng cladogram. Very good. All right. So, now, Tutor Easter, let's recognize the mausay output of the week for our week five. Okay, go ahead, yes, Tutor. So, from San Lorenzo Ruiz Senior High School, Machu D. Enriquez. Hey, congratulations, Machu. From Lorenzo S. Arimiento Senior National High School, from Cheska Cabanting. From Jones Rural School, Whitney Lantano. And from Horacio de la Costa High School, Russell J. Andohar. Yan, siguro yung mga tanim talaga nila at alaga nila yung pinicturean. Yes. From Jones Rural School, Charmaine Ballesteros. And from Horacio de la Costa High School, Alia Isabel Golosinda. From Daniel R. Aguinaldo National High School, Glidel Oplado. From Jones Rural School, Johanna Del Rosario. Gaganda na mga output nila, 213 yes. na. And from Lorenzo S. Sarmiento Senior National High School, Amar Sali. Okay, so there you have it. Congratulations, by star students. Ang gaganda ng output. And these are our references, the books and online, books, modules, and online references.
And also, don't forget to support other senior high school science and technology subjects. We have physical science, we have empowerment technologies, VRRR, disaster readiness and risk reduction, and of course, our general biology. And for, for our feedback, your feedback matters to us. So you just type that in URL, com, ito live feedback form, and also the QR, scan the QR code. Okay, we're very open to your feedback, comments, complaints, and all. Just um, yeah, scan lang the QR code. So thank you so much po for watching our uh, online session. And up next po is ALS or Alternative Learning System, Lifelong Learning. So again, ako po ulit si Tutor Tina from San Lorenzo Luis Senior High School, SDO Pasig. Sama niyo po ulit kami next week, Monday, same time, 4.40 to 5.20 p.m. Ako naman si Tutor Easter from Horacio de la Costa High School, SDO Caloacan City. Nag-iiwan ng mga katagang, magkakaiba man ang ating pinanggalingan. E tayo ay isang nilalang ng Diyos. Dapat tayo ay magrespetuhan at magmahalan sa bawat isa. Okay. See you po. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.